Okay, so now we have uh, a good knowledge of the game. We've played a little bit. We have some good theory behind us. We've been reading the kids. We've observed what the kids are bringing to the practice, to the game, so we know what we're working with there, done a good diagnosis. We've got some objectives in mind from our observations. We've taken those objectives, whittled them down, set them into priorities. Now what we need to do is actually set out the nuts and bolts, how we're going to get from A to B. What games will we use? What practices will we design? What are the elements that we can influence within those games to get the objectives so that the kids can solve the problems and be able to learn going from there? So the planning has to come after all of these other steps are taking place. Now an important element in planning is that how do you use the competitive phase of your soccer situation, that means your games on the weekends usually, and the practice phase together. Do they complement one another or do they work contrary? So for example, there's the old big goals, two small games, which is for building up out of the back. So in that game, the goalkeeper always rolls a new ball out to the back players and they build the game up out of the back and we have a lot of good possession soccer, things like that. So you do that at three, four practices, five practices. And this is going great. The kids are building up out of the back and things are going fantastic. And you get to the game on Saturday and you tell the goalkeeper, punt every time you get the ball. I don't want you to give it out of the back. Punt the ball. Punt the ball. Well, you're sending a conflicting message there that, well, we do this in practice, but we don't do it in the game. All right. And that's not going to help anyone. So either you're wasting your time in practice or you're practicing the wrong thing because when you get to the game you don't use what you're training for. Uh, another thing here is finally write it down. When you get to practice you should have the practice written down on a sheet of paper. There's a lot of different forms for that. There's some forms at US Soccer you can get, Better Soccer More Fun, you can download some practice forms, things of that nature. Uh, also at the games you should have your roster, everything already set out in terms of the game. What are you trying to achieve in that game? What is it you're going to do? You're going to work with the back players today so I don't need to worry too much about who's playing up top. I need to keep focused on the back players, keep some consistency there. Get all that stuff, write it down, and then when you write it down, don't throw the stuff away. Keep it as a notebook. We'll have a, a video on that a little bit later on, on how to develop a notebook. And you have your coach's notebook is a valuable tool. Uh, just as a point there, you see coaches that have gone through coaching courses where there's a practical session. You don't walk onto the field to do a practical session without having a lesson plan worked out. You have to give that lesson plan to the instructor for your evaluation. And yet you'll see time and again coaches with these licenses they come out to the field and they have nothing. Oh, so good, I can do this without anything written down, no problem. Well, that's great. Well, what did you do three weeks ago? Um, I, 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 well, I did something similar to this. So how are you building on anything? Write it down for your practices and your games. Learning to coach is a process. It's not something that you're going to go out and get a one or two hour course in your club and you get the cones and the balls and some bibs and you go out in a book maybe and you say, oh, I'm a coach now. Uh, yeah, right. It is a process. And if the longer you stay in it, the more you realize just how involved it is. Now here's something to do if you really invested a couple of seasons in coaching and you're familiar with the basics of things, get in touch with your local state association or if you're in Canada, provincial association or uh, the county associations in England or wherever it is or Australia, get in touch with and find out what their coaching license uh, structure is. Almost everyone has coaching licenses. It's one thing soccer or football is very good about is getting a structured curriculum that you can go through and get some information and move on from there. Uh, look them up, go through your club, just go on the internet, 
find someone, and then go out and get a license. And best of luck to you. And we hope see, hope, hopefully you'll keep looking at these videos and get something out of them.